Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody, and thanks again for uh, listening in uh, to my podcast. I really appreciate it. And this week, we are going to talk about the most powerful cultured veggie recipe that I have. And uh, there's a lot of explanation as to why this one is so powerful. And I really didn't know what I was creating when I created it, but I just thought the combination tasted good and seemed to give me spectacular results during cold and flu season. So I just kept making these vegetables and giving them to my family. Then fast forward, oh my gosh, like 12 years later, and one of the greatest discoveries I found lay in the jar of cultured vegetables that I was making. I had learning, been learning a lot about our immune system and what's going on inside of us and that our guts come, uh, you know, are comprised of just trillions of microbes and that at least 70% of our immune system is in our gut. So if it's healthy, guess what? Um, if your gut microbes are healthy, your immune system is too. So probiotic cultured foods are an important key to that, but so is something else that I discovered. And prebiotics, which is food for the bacteria in your gut, is the new frontier of discovery. And all things that I have been learning have been blowing my mind as to how important they are. You know, um, cultured veggies uh, are probiotic in nature, the cultured vegetables we make. So what are prebiotics? Prebiotics is a specific category of food, and these types of foods are food for bacteria. And they're very, very important as important as probiotics. They abide in fruits and vegetables, seeds, nuts, grains, and many other categories in smaller amounts. And a prebiotic is made from soluble fiber that has no calories, and your body cannot digest these fibers, but your bacteria can. So these non-digestible prebiotic fibers make your good bacteria grow like crazy. So you guys remember when uh, fiber was um, a huge buzz buzzword. That was the big craze. Everybody needed to eat a lot of fiber. A lot of products were coming out uh, that helped promote fiber in, in the body, in the diet. So having lots of fiber is feeding your good bacteria and allowing to, it to do its job. You need lots of beneficial strains of good bacteria that you can get by eating cultured foods, and but then you need the prebiotic fibers to feed those bacteria. And I can't stress enough how important this is. It has changed my life so much. And, you know, I've learned so much about it. I, I didn't realize that I was doing it in a natural way. Um, I was doing it naturally, but it was allowing people in my life to heal their bodies to get better because I didn't know that we were consuming so much of these prebiotic fibers along with the probiotic foods. So the more good bacteria you have, the stronger and more powerful your immune system becomes. You can't miss with large amounts of good bacteria because they want to dominate, control, and kill pathogens to keep you healthy. They're very, very smart, these microbes, and they want to hold the fort inside of you strong and keep enemies at bay. They strengthen the bowel walls, improving the body's ability to absorb essential nutrients, such as calcium and magnesium. They also produce hormones that help you control your appetite, anxiety, and a lot more than just that. In a world where scary viruses are going crazy, you need cultured foods and prebiotics to keep you strong. They basically control um, what's happening in your body, the immune system, the antibodies. They increase the amount of antibodies that you'll have because they act like a they have two different they have two different things that they work as. And one of them, they alert the body that there's a foreign invader that needs to be destroyed. Um, but having a lot of bacteria increases this alert system. And then they also sound out T, T cells, which help kill some of these viruses and pathogens, pathogens. And the more good bacteria you have, the more of those helpers you will have. Now, prebiotics um, act as a fertilizer pr to promote the growth of good bacteria in your gut. And this is really essential to the health and function of your immune system. You want a very large, diverse, and healthy amount of good bacteria in your gut. That's what you want. And eating cultured foods accomplishes that. You're going to get lots of probiotics and lots of good bacteria from eating these foods. But with the addition of prebiotics that's going to feed them, you have a super strong combination that will boost your immune system. 
Prebiotics also strengthen your ability to absorb calcium, magnesium, and other minerals that we are so lacking in our diets because our soils are depleted and we're not getting these minerals like we used to. There are different types of prebiotics and consuming prebiotics daily with cultured foods can really change your bacteria. Not, I mean, within a day, well, even within a meal. At one meal, having lots of prebiotic foods is going to change your gut flora almost instantly. And I want to share with you some of the prebiotics that you can help you grow a really healthy gut, but also that have the most bang for their buck. Um, Foods like jicama, leeks, onions, garlics, chicory root, Jerusalem artichokes, leeks, dandelion greens, asparagus, celery, the stalks of broccoli, not the florets, the stalk part, the peels of oranges and lemons. Um, And there are even things like fermented red wine, nuts, seeds, honey, and some whole grains that are high in prebiotics for your body. So I consume a lot of prebiotics every day. And what is so surprising is that this recipe that I made had eight different prebiotics in it. It might even had 10, actually. I think I discovered that it actually had more than that. And all the ingredients except for the culture and salt are prebiotics in this recipe. And I really didn't have any idea what I was making when I made it. And it was just, it was so exciting to me that um, it was doing more than just giving me probiotics. It was giving me massive amounts of prebiotics. So it was putting in the good bacteria and then feeding that good bacteria with prebiotics and making it stronger than it would have been had I not used those ingredients. So no wonder it was so effective, like at keeping colds and flus at bay. Um, And all the prebiotics in this recipe that I put in there are some of the most powerful ones that you can have. Now, I make all sorts of new recipes with tons of prebiotics, but I also sell a prebiotic too. And it's in the product called Prebio Plus. Prebio Plus has three of the most powerful prebiotics you can ingest. Each scoop contains organic inulin, which is a huge prebiotic, um, uh, the, the organic acai, which is a absolutely, that's one of the biggest ones there is. And then fruto oleosaccharide or FOS, that's another huge one. And that prebio has it in there. And guys, I have this every day. I use this, this prebiotic um, in my coffee. I put it in my kefir. I have it every day because it has helped me so much. And um, inulin and FOS in prebio are both soluble fibers. And they're found in a lot of plants. You don't have to buy my product. You can also find them in plants. Um, Many plants contain small amounts of inulin. And each inulin, which is um, in the prebio, but is also um, in all of these different foods that I'm going to tell you about. For instance, asparagus has 2 to 3 grams of inulin. Chicory root has 36 to 48 grams in it. And chicory root you can find... Um, in coffee alternatives, there's a lot on the market today. Um, and I, I'm going to show you where some of those are if you click the link in the description below. Um, that is a, it's a really, uh, it's getting more and more popular. It's coming up more and more in health foods. And then garlic has 9 to 16 grams. Jerusalem artichokes have 16 to 20 grams of inulin. And jicama has 10 to 13 grams. And last but not least, leeks have 1 to 8 grams in them. And these types of prebiotics are made up of chains of fructose molecules that are linked together in a way that cannot be digested by your small intestines. So this is something I want to talk about here. If for some reason you have SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is basically saying that you have bacteria in your small intestines where it shouldn't be, you should not ingest these types of fibers until you get that fixed. And I have a whole article on SIBO. Um, and IBS, when you've got these types of problems, that is a really w- big warning sign for your body that things are out of balance. And you have to do special things to get that um, back into balance. And so I caution you to not take any of these types of foods. Uh, it, was, it will give you more problems because your whole body's out of balance. We need to fix that first. But that's, I actually have a podcast on that, SIBO and fermented foods, I think. And so I might, I'll link that in the description below if you have that. But for that, I'm going to give you a warning. Do not do that uh, because those fibers will get digested there and then you'll have more problems. So because your body is having bacteria where it shouldn't. Okay. So the, the prebiotic acai, which is often called acai gum, contains 86% prebiotic content. 
It is used as a food stabilizer and has a substantial amount of fiber and is essential for strengthening the population of good bacteria in your gut. It's used in a lot of products and that is in, that's a really big one. That's in that product Prebio Plus, um, but it's, it's a very big one. It's 86% prebiotic, so which is about the biggest of any of them. And your gut bacteria converts all of these types of inulin, FOS, into short, vein, into short chain fatty acids. And this can bring so many, many health benefits. It will nourish colon cells. It can help with weight loss and lowering blood sugars. It can help with cholesterol. And when the soluble fibers that compromise inulin creates this gelatinous substance, the gel spreads out in your body, in your gut, and creates a feeling of fullness. Uh, and I, I can attest to that, by the way. It really does do that. And uh, it's one of the reasons I have it every morning in my coffee, because I just... I can go for many, many hours feeling very full, um, and it's not affected by heat. Uh, probiotics are affected by heat, but prebiotics are not. They can be a little bit if if they're kept at too high of a temperatures, but it does work very, very well. Okay, so here's here's an interesting study. When overweight people took 21 grams of inulin per day, which is in all the foods I talked about and also in prebio, their hunger their hunger hormones levels decreased and their fullness hormones levels increase. And I have all the studies on this because we have hormones in our bodies that creates a sense of fullness and creates a sense of hunger. And each one of these different hormones, and I think it's, they, they send out signals to tell our bodies to eat more. And a lot of people with diabetes or high blood sugars have those hormones out of balance. Well, these types of foods, these types of prebiotic foods help to calm that down and help to bring your hormones back into balance. And in another study, 44 pre-diabetic individuals consumed either 18 weeks of inulin or cellulose. Now, cellulose is a different type of fiber. That's insoluble fiber, which your bacteria does not feed on. It's still good for you, creates bulk in the body, um, but doesn't have the same soluble fiber that prebiotic fiber does that feeds your bacteria. So each one of these 44 individuals had four visits to the dietitian to obtain and they wanted them to obtain a 5% weight loss, which they all achieved by week nine. But those taking inulin lost significantly more weight between nine and 18 weeks and scored better on all their liver tests, all their blood sugar tests and lipid profiles, independent of the weight loss. So things got a lot better for those people who um, were taking the inulin versus the other category that was just taking the cellulose. So, there's a lot of studies that indicate that inulin can help you with weight loss and increasing your consumption of these special fibers helps to keep you healthy in so many ways. And I link that in the article I wrote. There's a lot of studies on this. So adding these types of foods to your diet or adding the supplementation is really going to help with those types of things. And I, there's a lot more information on how it helps with other things too. But in this article, I specifically wanted to target that for people who actually really struggle with this. So you can add prebio to your kefir or vegetables and it will make a world of difference. You're going to put that into the vegetables as they're fermenting, cultured vegetables, or in your kefir. And you're going to get a lot of benefits because the probiotics in the kefir and in the cultured vegetables are going to eat this inulin. So you're going to get more probiotics from your kefir and from your cultured vegetables um, because of adding inulin to them, which is, I just had a scoop of prebio because it's so effective for it. So, and you will notice it after the first dose. And so I caution you to go slowly with this. Um, I have a little scoop if you take the prebio. It's better probably to start out eating more of the vegetables um, if you're worried about it. Um, but if you do start out if with the prebio, just use it like a tiny bit, like don't use the full scoop, use like a quarter of it because your stomach is going to start to gurgle and rumble because that's your bacteria having a feast and growing and changing and you're going to hear it. Um, and you could, so go slowly in the beginning and uh, you can put it in hot or cold foods. Um, I've even added to my iced tea. Uh, I've done that too in the morning. I feed my kefir grains with it. Um, it will help them grow like crazy, but it will help you too. So um, if you have, like for instance, if your kefir, if you've made your kefir and you've and it's gotten separated into whey and curds. It's starting to get liquidy. Add a scoop of prebio to it, shake it up, and put it back in the refrigerator. And the next day, it'll be cre it'll be 
uh, creamy again. I do that a lot. Um, a lot of people have trouble, especially in the summertime when their kefir gets thin because it's the warm temperatures cause it to ferment more quickly. This will help make it creamy again. It's just because you're giving food to the bacteria that allows it to have a new food source. So you're going to get more probiotics and it's going to help your kefir stay creamier. So these types of foods, um, probiotic foods and prebiotic foods, um, if you give your body what it needs, you'll feel better, lighter, elimination will be easier, uh, less, you know, more frequent, and f colds and flus will be a thing of the past. You'll start to feel better about, you know, uh, feeding that good bacteria, and you'll start to stay healthier. Prebox are every bit as powerful as probiotics, and that's really exciting to me. I'm still growing and learning, but I love that I was already making recipes with tons of prebiotics in them without realizing it. See, you know, everybody knows that eating fruits and vegetables is so important. It's, it's so much better for you. Um, your is the more greens you have, the more vegetables you have, more fruits and stuff you have, the better you feel. And everybody knows that. But all along, um, it wasn't just the foods themselves. It was feeding your bacteria and your gut. So it was keeping you healthy in that way because you were feeding the bacteria that in turn strengthens your immune system and keeps you healthy in so many ways. So maybe all this time they were telling you to do that, it was because it was feeding your bacteria, and that's why it's so good for you. So eat your cultured foods, your fruits, your veggies, your nuts, your seeds, and add more prebiotics to you and watch your gut bacteria change um, almost overnight. And this recipe that I make um, has everything to accomplish the task. I, I just made a new jar, and it is really, really a, a tasty type of of cultured vegetable that I think that you would really, really like. And in this jar, um, this is what's, let me tell you about the ingredients in this jar. So you're having cabbage, you have a jicama, you have an apple, you have some spinach, you have a small leek, you have a small carrot, you have a clove of garlic, and you have some Celtic sea salt, which helps lower the pH and allows the um, fermentation to be better. You have an, an orange, and I put a scoop of prebio, which is optional. You don't have to do that. And then a culture, whether it's cutting edge culture or you can use kefir whey. And you chop all this up and you let it ferment for six days on your counter. And then it lasts for nine months in your fridge. And it is crazy good. Actually, we just had my, I was watching my husband and son have some last night. One of their favorite things to do is they take that cultured veggie and mix it in some kefir cheese and use it as a dip. And they were watching something on TV and eating that. And um, they really enjoyed it. They said, oh, this is really good. So this is loaded with prebiotics. And um, it's on my website. I'm going to put the link in the description below. And you will, you will love it. There's all different kinds of cultured vegetable recipes on my website uh, to help you. And this one, I think, is the most powerful one of them all because it has so many prebiotics. So let's recap. So Probiotic foods is going to make the good bacteria in your gut. gut. Um, you're going to have, add new types of bacteria to your gut and strengthen some of the ones that you have. But when you feed it prebiotics, you're going to make all of those strains across the boards grow and multiply, which in tune is going to strengthen your immune system. You're going to have more um, helper cells that are going to help fight flus and pathogens. And um, it's also just going to help you feel better, not just physically, but emotionally. It's going to strengthen your immune system in so many different ways. Um, I got a wonderful email uh, from somebody, and right now we're in the middle of, um, you know, the flu epidemic with people are all staying home and um, trying to do social distancing. And I got a wonderful email um, from someone, and her name was Celeste, and she said uh, she had just finished watching one of my videos and listening to one of my podcasts. And she said that she liked at the end of it that it said people who, who this is what I had said was that people who feel good do good. And then she said, and I guess the contrary would be people who feel bad do bad, or at least are unable are unable to do good. And then she continued to say, maybe that was the genesis of saying misery loves company. One other thing during this time of uncertainty that I wager people who have healthy guts and lots of friendly bacteria will find this time of quarantine, social isolation, and social distancing much easier to bear. And perhaps the company you keep in your gut is enough when it's made up of happy bacteria. 
Thank you, Celeste, for that wonderful thing, because that is really true. Um, the better you feel, the more good you want to do, um, the more things you want to do to help one another. And um, I can attest to that because when you don't feel good, you don't want to do anything. So um, hopefully this will help you to maybe keep your gut bacteria happy and give you more energy. There's a lot of vitamin C in this in these cultured vegetables that actually boost your adrenals so you're able to handle stress better. Um, and they, it, it seems to work almost instantly when you even have just the juice from these vegetables. It really does help give you more um those immune boosting, but not only that, mood boosting um, things that you need in your body like vitamin C and lots of B vitamins that help keep those adrenals running and healthy and help keep you uh, less worried, less scared, um, less depressed. And um, it really does make a difference to have a healthy gut because I've seen over and over again that people who are struggling with things like depression and mood disorders really have a, a healthy balance in their gut. And uh, that's a whole other podcast that I've already done. Even uh, psychologists are starting to realize that when they start to fix their patients' guts, that they start to feel better. So anyway, well, thank you guys for listening. I hope this helps you. And I hope you'll try these veggies or any veggies. And if you do, I'm going to put all the links in the description below. And I hope that this will help you and keep you happy and uh, strengthen your immune system and help you understand that food can be medicine for the body. And it's a, it's a wonderful way to treat your body with care. I hope you have a wonderful week. And as always, thank you guys for listening. It means a lot to me, um, not just because you're listening to me, but because I'm hoping that the information will help you live a better life like it has for me. We'll see you next time. And thanks again. Bye-bye.